Hello, and welcome to the Steady On Stronger Together podcast. I am your host, Angie Bauman, and my co-hosts for this episode are dear friends and fellow readers, Maria Jessup and Lisa Wood. Our special guest is New York Times bestselling author, Patty Callahan, and she joins us to discuss her book, Becoming Mrs. Lewis, a beautiful retelling of the life of Joy Davidman, who was an author, a poet, and wife to C.S. Lewis. Patty was an absolute delight to interview, and her passion for Joy Davidman's life and work is inspiring. I hope you love the discussion, and it's interesting, educational, and encouraging to you. Welcome, Steady On community. We are so thrilled tonight to have Patty Henry, or Patty Callahan. Please tell me how you would like. I, I see it both ways. All the ways. You answer Patty to Callahan, all of it. Patty Callahan. I, I usually have said Patty Callahan because that's what it is on your book that we're going to be talking tonight. Yeah, Becoming yay. Mrs. Lewis. We're so yeah. excited. We've all got our books. Lisa, you, Lisa's always the one that holds up her book. I know. Tonight, she missed, she missed it. <laughs> I was doing <laughs> <still laughs> <in> the face. <laughs> I was the face up. Uh, I know. I know. I need you to watch watch the Facebook for us. <laughs> um, but we've been looking forward to this for a long time. We have loved this book. The Steady On community has loved this book. And so if you're joining us tonight, I know you're in for a real treat. I'm Angie Bauman. And these are my lovely co-hosts, Maria <laughs> Jessup, Wave Maria, and Lisa Wood. And it is our delight to welcome author and our special guest, Patty Callahan. And I want to share just a little bit with you about Patty. And then Patty, this is what I usually do. I tell people what I know, and then I'll give you a chance to add other things or correct me or however you however you want, you want to do that. You but. want me to put my screen on dark so you can just... <laughs> <laughs> Patty is a New York Times and USA Today bestselling author. She won the Book of the Year for the Christie Awards in 2019, which is incidentally how I was introduced to your work because I follow uh -huh. the Christie Awards as we're making book selections for this group. And um, I was like, oh, that looks really good. So um, she's a Harper Lee Distinguished Writer of the Year 2020 the Alabama Library Association Book of the Year Association Book of the Year 2019. She has written 15 novels. Do I have that right? Yeah. Yes. And she is the host of a seven part podcast behind the scenes of Becoming Mrs. Lewis, yeah. which I am me thoroughly too. enjoying. Yeah, I've too. been listening to those and really enjoying those. You know, it's yeah. so interesting that there's still so much more to learn about Joy right. Davidman. We're going to get into that in just a minute. She's a full-time author and mother of three, and she splits her time between homes in Alabama and South Carolina. So, right? Am I right about most of that All stuff? All of those things are true. <laughs> what, what else would you like us to know about you before we dive into your book? Oh, wow. Um, I said, it's so funny whenever I hear that mother of three kids, which is yes. true. Um, but also that we've been saying that about me for the, my first book came out in 2004. So my bio has always said, you mother know, the mother of three. of three. And it's so funny now because they're, they're grown. I mean, I'm a grandmother. So oh, I feel wow. like I should say the mother of three and the grandmother of one or right, right. the mother of three of children who no longer live at home. <laughs> grown children. It always, grown makes, children. Me, it always makes me laugh when I hear that. Yeah. Well, yeah. And your grandchild is a granddaughter or grandson. I have a baby girl granddaughter. She is 19 months old. Her name is Bridget. Nice. And right now they live in Hawaii. So oh. heartbreakingly, I have not been able to see them since COVID started. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I know I was That's... heading out there in March and now I can't go. Oh. So I'm waiting for everything to open. Right. Up, but, yeah. Yes. I'm sorry about that. That's very far away. Now you have a very good reason to go to Hawaii, I guess, frequently, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yes, but not right now. So. Not right now. Um, well, again, we have, I, I think this book is a masterpiece and I, I mean that sincerely. I, there was so much that I learned that I did not know. I am not, I've been of course familiar with C.S. Lewis for years, not an avid reader. Mm -hmm. um, I have read, I thought it was really interesting. I've heard Patty say that she read the screw tape letters when she was 12 years old. That <laughs> I did not read it when I was 12, but I was, I was greatly influenced by the screw tape letters and I have read some of his works. Um, but I had no idea the story about Joy Davidman. I knew mm -hmm. nothing really about her. And so um, I really felt like when I, I I listened to the audio actually. And when I was listening to it, I honestly felt like I was just kind of in another place in mm -hmm. another time. I just oh, such beautiful, precise writing that was mm -hmm. just 
a, a, a joy to read. It really was sad. Of course, the story is somewhat sad, but also just so full of hope and encouragement. So just thank you for this gift. I really think it is just a beautiful gift. Um, and as we read the book, we could totally feel the honor and admiration you have for joy, David. And so I just want you to talk to us a little bit about why this story about this woman, what, what was that, where, where did that passion for this story come from for you? So like you said, um, I was, you were, you were a Lewis reader. I was a Lewis reader and I knew, you know, I'd read a grief observed. So I knew that when his wife died, it, you know, it shattered him. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, it, it made him more human. If you read a grief observed, you, you realize that he's human. You know, we tend to put him on a pedestal and put quotes all over the internet and use him as inspiration. But when you read about you know, his heartbreak when Joy died. And I, I just got to wondering, who was this woman? Mm. And I had seen Shadowlands. I think most of us have. It's the movie about their relationship with Anthony Hopkins and Deborah Winger. And yet that whole movie is about him mm -hmm. and which it was supposed to be, but it was about him and how it affected his work and how it affected his life. And she just kind of showed up right? Mm -hmm. Hi, in England with one kid. And, and they fell in love and then she broke his heart. And I just started getting curious about her. So I thought I was going to write a love story. I thought that I was going to do my research and tell this improbable love story that I would find out how this American born at New York, not just American, but born and raised in New York, never left New York for all of her life. How this woman and a man who's an Oxford Don at you know, at Oxford University, at Magdalen College, had never left Ireland or England, except when he was in the war, how these two people met. I thought I was going to just write this crazy love story. And then I found this quote that Joy wrote in an essay, because we'll talk more about her, I know, but she was a award-winning poet and a writer and a novelist and an essayist. And I quote this all the time, so you've probably heard it, but I have it in a painting here in my office. But she had a question she asked in that essay, and it was, if we should ever grow brave, what mm -hmm. on earth would become of us? I love that. I love it so much. And mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's on a painting in here, and mm -hmm. I have it on a sticky in here. And, and all of a sudden, I realized that this wasn't just a love story. Of course, it's a love story. But that this was about this powerful transformational journey yes. of a woman who answered that question with her life. Mm -hmm. And so she wrote that question and then she spent the next 10 years of her life answering that question. Mm -hmm. What would ever become of me if I should mm -hmm. ever grow brave? And yeah. so the story changed dramatically. And I knew that I needed to tell more than just a simple love story. Her vulnerability is so brave. Mm -hmm. And I think... I'm going to ask you this question about Patty, about you. I think tackling a project like this is very brave. Do you, would you consider it brave? Maybe in hindsight, mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't think we ever consider ourselves brave, right? Mm -hmm. I think that w what happened for me is that I was in the deep end before I realized I'd been in the deep end. And I can relate I to that. Do. Yes. <laughs> in the that. water. Yeah. You know, I kind of jumped in the deep end thinking it was like the middle end or the yeah. shallow end. And once I realized that I was in the deep end, there was nothing to do but swim for my life. Mm -hmm. So, um, or give up and get out. Mm -hmm. And so I was not going to give up. Although, I think y'all right. I think, you know, there's every project you ever do, there's at least one moment, if not a few, where you say, mm -mm, yeah. done. <laughs> not doing yeah. it. Yeah. and, um, you know, there were a couple of moments like that because I really was in over my head mm -hmm. uh, in a huge way. But as, as she started to come to life for me, I, I, I was brave in, if I was brave, I was brave in this way. I had to take the, the, scary voice off my shoulder that said, don't you dare write about C.S. Lewis. That is way too big. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to get eaten alive. You are no C.S. Lewis scholar, <laughs> Patty Henry. So um, I had to, I had to pretend, I wrote this book in secret. So I had to pretend nobody would ever read it to really do what I did. 
So I want to ask you about that because I've read or listened to you say that you did research for like three years. So mm -hmm. you did like all of that was in secret because this is a this is a big project. Yeah, you kind of so did that all on the sly. <laughs> I did. So I mean, there were a couple people who knew. Oh, that, sure, but, right, but yeah, yeah. You know, my yeah. my husband knew what yeah. I was doing. Um, a couple of my. <laughs> I don't know, but you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think maybe a handful of, of people knew. Um, but the the research required some travel, obviously. Yes. So, and, and we can talk about that when you're ready. But you know, some of it was to Wheaton at, to the Wade Center at Wheaton College outside Chicago. And then some of it was to London. I know, poor me. Yeah, right. <laughs> some of it was to Oxford, double poor me. And then some, some of it was to the pubs. I, I know. Somebody's right. got to do it. To work. Listen, all of that is on my bucket list now. I yeah, am right. going. Right. Let, let's do a, let's do a in the steps of joy trip with the folks. Yes. So love it. Sign me up. Yes. All of us would sign, sign up. Sign me viewers. up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Even the anyway. dreary <laughs> reputation that London has doesn't scare exactly. us now. Oh, yeah. Don't let it scare you. Their <laughs> dreary is our sunny whatever. It's yeah. Here. Well, at least as long as you're in yeah. the city, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the research because like I said, we're Illinois girls. Lisa lives in Oklahoma now, but I actually have an acquaintance that works at Wheaton College. And so when I learned a little bit that that was the home for the papers and things, and I heard you in a, an interview uh, talk about just your your appreciation for the Wade Center. And I just wanted you to just talk a little bit about the Wade Center and what it has meant to you and this project, because I could tell by listening to you that it holds a special place in your heart. I get a little choked up when I talk about them. I noticed that um, in the interview. I yeah. do. Well, no, I get, I, yeah. I you, when I, the interview that I watched, you were at the Wade Center, I believe. Uh, oh, was, was I? It, okay. it was a YouTube video of a lecture that you did. And it was, yeah, it was, was, it was wonderful. I so nervous at the lecture. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, I, that was the most nervous I've ever been giving a Joy Davidman lecture because it's where all the scholars, C.S. Lewis scholars are. It's like the I people got, who really know the yes, answers, I right? Yeah, I get it. One yeah. <laughs> little thing wrong, maybe we're gonna know. Um, she's an imposter. That's the voice we hear in our heads. Yeah, I know. And I yeah. guess what, for, I think they might've thought I was for a little bit because I wrote fiction and none of the, mm -hmm. none of the books written about joy. Okay, so let's back it up. Yeah, go ahead. The Way yeah, Center is this amazing center in this really, uh, English, it looks like somebody took a little English cottage and dropped it right next to Wheaton. It's on campus. Okay. And it holds the papers of the seven most important British authors of that time. Wow. So it holds the papers for J.R.R. Tolkien, G.K. Chesterton, Owen Barfield, Charles Williams, C.S. Lewis, George MacDonald, and one woman, Dorothy Sayers. Okay. And so the co-directors are Crystal and David Downing, and they are simply astounding people. And, but they weren't running it when I was doing my research. And so I did my research there and I did my research like baseball cap, didn't tell them who I was, spent days in the reading room, requested all Joy's papers. So it was really weird to come back, you know, two years later and, and then Surprise. give a lecture. Yeah. Right, I know, right? <laughs> so, it was me. Um, I love that. Same, same girl. Yeah. But, and, but the, I got to know them through the, sure. after the, after I visited, then I became, as one should, became dear friends with the research librarian. Sure. Um, right. as, as all authors, should. plus right. she's amazing. So I, I, you know, I kept in touch with her and then they're the reason that I eventually was able to be in touch with Joy's son, Douglas. Oh, wow. So, and I've been back um, again and I've done, you know, read some more of her papers and such after, after that happened. But I think they, they are amazing and they do amazing work. And um, the couple of times I've visited, it, it just feels like home. And, and when you slip into that reading room, so if you've ever been to a research library, it's not like a regular library. You can't just go check out a book, you know, they, but they also have a room that has the desk he wrote on the typewriter joy used um, some drawings of his and Tolkien's and some other things, but in the library itself, you, you have to check things. You have to check them out folder by folder and you can't bring in a phone and you can't bring in a pen. You can only bring in a pencil oh, wow. and you, um, yeah, it's no cameras. Because they don't want you to take pictures of the yeah, stuff. And you have right? to wear gloves when you touch certain things. Okay. You can only check out one folder at a time. 
But when you're sitting in that quiet reading room, it really mm. feels like time, mm -hmm. you know, I say this a lot, but it feels like time folds in yeah. on itself. Yeah. And you really, um, I, I felt like I had come to know her through uh -huh. her work and her poetry, but in that reading room, I feel like I met her. So. Mm. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a great segue to the next question, really, that I have on my heart, and that is, I I felt like I knew her, mm -hmm. and I I would yeah I know that the other ladies felt mm -hmm. that way, and I think other people who read it, yeah. when you read it, you feel like you know her, and that comes from the author you feeling like you know her, and so I just talk to us a little bit what it's like to get to know someone, because even I think correct me if I'm wrong, but the letters back and forth in your book are you knowing them, not letters that you actually had, right? And so what's right. it like to get to know the heart of someone as a fiction writer the best you can when you didn't actually know them? Right, I always say, you know, I came to know her as well as I can on this side of the grave. And right. I feel like I even know her better now, but um, Joy left a lot behind. Mm -hmm. She left, especially the love sonnets. That, you know, about 10 years ago, you know, that box was found in Oxford yes. and inside that box were 300 unpublished poems of Joy Davidman's, mm. 300. Mm. And one of the folders were 45 love sonnets for C.S. Lewis. And I just feel like she left those for us to find mm -hmm. one day to know, to really know her heart. Those sonnets, she just Poured, poured out her, her heart. heart out. Yes, she, she never yes. published them. Mm -hmm. She didn't write them for publication. She didn't write them for for fame. She they were straight. It was like reading her journal. Mm -hmm. That's what they were like. Do you know if she, I know in the book she she does give those to him? Do you know if she if, if C. S. Lewis if she did give them to him? Do you know that? Nobody knows that. Nobody the, knows. Okay, well, yeah. I think he knows that. But yeah. Um, and he knows that, but I think right. I just, yeah, I mean, do we know that? Do we that. know if he? Re yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we don't know. Mm -hmm. But every yeah. all the research I did, and all the reading I did, and the way I came to understand her, heck, yes, she did. Yeah. <laughs> and if you you had mentioned my podcast at the beginning, yes. of this, and one of my podcast interviews is with this astounding man who's a professor at Montreat, and he's a huge expert on Lewis, but he's an even huger expert on Joy. Okay. He is the leading expert on her scholarly work and on her poetry. He has three books, a couple of them behind me, out about Joy's work and, um, and two books about her poetry. And we did an interview on that podcast and we also did an interview together at Montreat and we both agree that she gave him those, yeah. those sonnets. Yeah, I, I heard that interview and I was so glad to hear how that all came about because I'm going to tell you when I read the book, every word in it was true to me and all the dialogue that you had was the dialogue they had and I didn't know it until I read it at the end and I'm like, oh no, she has it exactly right. <laughs> Lisa said, this is like red letter Jesus said these right. things, right? Yeah. That's so funny because I often get notes that say, um, could you tell me every word that's real and every word that's made up? And I'm like, what am I supposed to red letter the book? <laughs> right. I, I don't know. So that's funny. Uh, go, go ahead, well, Maria. You had something that, to Yeah, add. on that same note, I, I echo everybody's feelings in that I felt like Joy was truly telling the story. Like mm -hmm. uh, it was Joy. I mean, uh, we were experiencing her life and that uh, kudos to you as the author. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I didn't think for a second, I kind of forgot about Patty, Patty Callahan for a minute. I was good. Just I want you to think that's good. Right. I, totally. think, yeah, I, I think that's what that the authors so want, right? To yes. be able to hear the story from yes. the main character's point yep. of view. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Marie, if I accomplished any goal, that it was it's it was to get out of Joy's way, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Get me out yes. of Joy's way. Yeah, um, right. totally. I that's, keep that's a picture of her it. hanging up, and and whenever I felt like I was talking in my voice, and if you read any of my other books, you'll see a, a huge difference in voice. Okay. Um, mm. I, I I mean, I'm sure I I always say it's not. Um, from, of me, but it's definitely from me. Mm -hmm. So of course it has to come through me. Oh, sure. Right. There's right. there's parts of me in there, but it, as much as I could from, especially from her letters, she has a cadence and she has a certain way of speaking, and she she's very vulnerable and she's very she's much much smarter than me. She was a genius, a literal yes. mental genius, and I can say she's smarter than me without putting myself down. Mm -hmm. She was just a genius. She mm -hmm. spoke 
four or five languages. Mm -hmm. She could read by the time she was three years old. She, uh, you know, she graduated from high school when she was 14 with honors. She had a master's degree when she was 19 from Columbia in a master's in fiction arts with a thesis on Lord Orrery. She was a genius. She was a sight memorizer. She was, um, you know, uh, won the Yale Younger Poets Award. She was just a genius. So to to try and emulate her voice, I had to steep myself in her voice because it couldn't be mine. There's no way. I thought it was so interesting for both Jack, if I can, and Joy, that they were both so accomplished, so intelligent, um, and yet still struggled with insecurities about their work and their place in the world. And it just kind of goes to show, I thought that actually, thank you for sharing that part of their heart too with us, because I think we all struggle with that because sometimes we, maybe we achieve something or we get someplace and we think that'll be the thing. And then we realize that's not the thing either, right? Because this, this, um, this belief about worth has to come from inside and for us, you know, us as believers through our connection with Jesus Christ and believing that we are worthy that way and and I believe they both did have that also but it's this tension right we live in this world and um and the accolades that we seek versus the ones that we know we already can claim I thought that was really just I, I, I just I, thought that was a beautiful part of her story yeah mm-hmm. and I think that's one of the biggest things that um if someone gets mad about the book it's that I made Lewis human mm. there's certain mm. people that don't like that and he was human and they love seeing joy as broken and wounded and um, making huge mistakes. And they love to be mad at her about that and insult her about that, but they don't want to know he's human Mm -hmm. and that he made mistakes and that he was an atheist and that he suffered and was wounded and lost his mother and got injured in the war and had writer's block and didn't get promoted at work. I mean, he was human, right? And Lisa, I talked right off at, over you. What were you? What were you going to say? I, I was. I was going to uh, say that his being the atheist in both of them, their conversion stories are just so much bigger because of that. In my, you know, in my opinion, that if he could go from atheism to knowing God and knowing Christ, what a huge testimony that is. Yeah, and both of them, how similar their atheist mm-hmm. to believing journeys were. Mm-hmm. Both of them were hardcore atheists. Both of them went to theism first, then research, mm-hmm. then went to Christianity and, I, it, to, and to Christ. And I think that what is so fascinating to me is that they both went through the same journey because they both were so intellectual mm-hmm. and they were willing to ask the bigger questions. They weren't willing to just accept it they were willing to surrender, not surrender their intellect, but use their intellect mm-hmm. and then still, and then still believe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I did appreciate you, the humanness. Go ahead, of, Maria, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's okay. I, I did appreciate the humanness of C.S. Lewis, especially when um, their relationship got a little deeper and he was unwilling to go there. Yeah, you know, and she, you know, she was so patient in that, but uh, it took me a little. uh, No, no, okay, okay. (laughs) She had no choice. She had no choice. But but then, when I realized where he was coming from with that and his and his vows or what, however it was, where I'm like, oh no, see, no. But anyway, yeah, I I I appreciated that that side of C.S. Lewis and and that layer that we don't see very often of him peeled back and and uh, get to see that. So thank you. I enjoyed that. Yes, you made me want to read, mm-hmm. want to read more C.S. Lewis now is yes. kind of what you have. And by the way, I'll read all of your books now too. Right, I know. So yeah. I'm just like, oh, I got to read all of them. You're right. <laughs> She's not just saying that. She no. will read them all. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then I'll come back. Even on though. Show. Even though I don't know, do you write any books where people get killed? Because Lisa <laughs> likes the ones where people get killed. And you <laughs> We always give her a hard time because it's I don't seem die. to ever pick a novel <laughs> where everybody gets killed and they need to find the murderer. I don't know, but no, awesome. <laughs> we're trying to broaden her. No, I'm just teasing you, Lisa. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when you say they, uh, like if the, the ones that are like mad about it or, um, you know, the critics or the, the, who, who, who are the they that have struggled maybe to embrace your work 
I'm, I bet you could go online and find them. <laughs> find I don't mean specific names. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't engage with the day. Very um, smart. <laughs> yeah. Once in a while, I'll get somebody in at an event who will, you know, kind of stand up and say, "I didn't like her," okay. and I'll be like, "That's Sorry. cool." Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. You know, she she you know I didn't like that she did this or that she went to England or that she you know, left her husband or, oh, really? Because he was a cheating, right, right. alcoholic, right, right, abusive. Right. I'm sorry that you don't like she left him. I'm sorry that that doesn't work for you. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 know. <laughs> I think that, um, I, I think that they who, who get angry at that, I try to remember that um, often it, it, it's about them more than it's about me or my book. It still hurts to get a mean review or, Absolutely. you know, mm-hmm. we, I don't know why anybody would go on and put a mean review. If you don't like something, just, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> but mean, come on. So of course they, I don't read them anymore, but um, in the beginning, you can't help it. Right. And I try to remember that something about joy triggers something in them. Mm-hmm. It really mm-hmm. has very little to do with mm-hmm. my book. I thought she was brave to leave that abusive, horrible mm-hmm. marriage. That mm-hmm. took a lot of courage, especially at the a lot. You know, years. It's not now. This is a while ago. And I was uh, in yeah. that late forties. Yes. And, and Lisa, not only was it difficult for the times, you know, it, it was also difficult because they were broke. Yes. So a lot of the women who did leave in the late forties, early fifties, they usually had the means to leave. So Okay. Not, she not only had to buck societal and family and friend expectations and, 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 and she had two little boys. Mm-hmm. They were seven and nine when she left and, and very she had young. no money. Right. And um, very young in her faith journey also. Right? Oh yeah. She, I she mean, didn't she know didn't... what she was doing or where right. she was going right. or right. yeah, she just issues. kept trusting the next step. And, and that's what I love. She kept just doing the next yeah. best thing. Yes. Next right yes, thing. Yes. The next right thing. Yeah. <laughs> one my little one of my little things. One step at a time, friends. That's all any of us can do. That's, That's one of the got. things I say on this page oh, quite a bit. Yeah. So in the podcast interviews I listened with Douglas, uh, I he seemed to be very affirming about like your retelling of the story know, is, has that has he been positive to you I mean it seemed like it was very positive uh, relationship I'm, between you and you and he I'm the him. luckiest I yeah. mean mm-hmm. I am astounded by his support because he didn't have to by any means um I I could have published the book without him or without permissions Mm -hmm. now it wouldn't be in the exact form you read it because her poetry is in this version I needed permission for her poetry but on the whole I could have just run off and done it without him but um we've become really dear friends you know Mm -hmm. As much as one can when one lives in right. South Carolina and one lives in Malta, but, you know, we write all the time and we keep up and during COVID we checked in and mm-hmm. um, people will often send me things they want him to read and I'll I will never share his email, but I'll forward it on, you know, yeah. and some of it's crazy and <laughs> about it, but um, some of it's really meaningful. So yeah, I, he his support so I'll tell you how I found out he liked the book yeah so I gave it to him early and was thinking well if there's anything he hates in it he has time to tell me and I can not do it. decide right yeah right (laughs) Yeah. Right. well he never said anything it got published he never said anything and we're emailing we're keeping up with each other all is well but he never said a word about one time he said something about that I had the wrong kind of car and then one time pretty detailed yeah (laughs) <laughs> but it was what I read. Yeah. And then one time, and then one time he told me that his mother would have never told his father not to smoke in the house because everybody smoked in the house back then. Okay. I was like, okay, it, whatever. But he never said another word. So I was like, oh no, he's gonna nitpick this thing from now right. until eternity and he's gonna read a page a day or something. <laughs> so I just let it go. And then one day um somebody emailed me and said, Have you heard this? And it was a podcast. It was a homeschool podcast because he's big on homeschooling okay. and um, a homeschool, somebody was interviewing him and about halfway, the person who sent it to me and now I don't even remember who said like, listen at 12 point 
whatever, 12 yeah. minutes. And, do it. and I forwarded it to him and I heard the podcast lady say, so have you, have you read this book about your mother called Becoming? And I could feel. My oh, heart going, yeah, I can do it. I can feel boom, it with you. <laughs> and then it was like up in my throat and I like paused it and I was like, I don't know if I can listen. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> like, like hearing, like being in a bathroom stall and hearing women talk about you or something. Yeah, right. I was like, oh my God, which has happened to me. So, oh. <laughs> so anyway, he just went on about how great it was. And oh. my favorite quote is, and he said it numerous times in different places, is that it's as accurate or more accurate than most biographies. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Maybe. That had to, I was going to say that had to just do your heart so good. Yeah. To hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather have him say that than, than all the five stars in the world. Right? Yeah. 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 I think that's, yeah. I, it was interesting listening to him and the, the, the difficult situation with his older brother. And I noticed that none of that's in the book. Can I just ask, did you know that uh, and choose to leave it out? Or is that something you learned maybe after you? I learned it. it um, I did learn it before the book came out and, um, because they're children in the book, sure. I don't really get into their adult lives. Mm-hmm. I left out a lot mm-hmm. of that. But if you read between the lines, Davy's very difficult mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. book. And yeah. that was already in there. Like Davy, I could tell from reading Joy's letters, she called him a runaway atom bomb. Mm-hmm. I could tell that Davy was much more difficult than Douglas yeah. for her. Mm-hmm. And Jack had written a couple letters about how difficult Davy was and just what a dear Douglas was. So some mm. of that was already in there. And yeah. then I just kind of pumped it sure. up in like one or two places. But because we stopped the book when Davy and Douglas are what, 14 mm-hmm. and 12 or something, mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't get into how difficult it became in later years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of Joy's friends, oh, you know what? I'm going to circle back before I ask this question. I thought we were were talking about the divorce earlier and people being down on that. And I think I I might not say this exactly right, but I thought it was really interesting in the book and correct me if I'm wrong. There was something about Joy feeling like she needed the strength to stay when in fact God gave her the strength to leave. Am I saying that right? That's, That's what I took away from it. And I just, I wanted to circle back and say that because I thought, I thought that was one of the most profound things, at least what, what I heard in my heart through that. Like sometimes I think God does give us the strength to endure something. And sometimes the greatest strength we need is to separate ourselves from it. So I guess I just, yes. Yeah. I, I think that the, the imperfections in both of their lives Mm -hmm. is really the beauty of the story because that's life and that's faith. And that's kind of leads us to this, my next question. And because there's a quote in the book, this is Lisa this is Lisa's quote where that she was like, this is like my favorite part, but <laughs> Joy's friend says, okay, I'm, I'm, like, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to quote it actually, even because she's like on this page, being a Christian, isn't what most think it is all rules and regulations. It is all trust and surrender and transformation at its best. And I think we're all just so drawn to the transformational unfolding process in both these characters, but especially in Joy, I think, because maybe because we're women and, you know, and it's, it's her story. And um, I just wondered, I think that's just, it provides so much hope and encouragement. And I wondered just maybe if you would share a little bit about your own unfolding or maybe what you learned about yourself or what God taught you through just getting to know her better and writing this project. So I grew up a preacher's kid. So oh, it's not me like too. I come, did you? And I, I am a we preacher. We deserve so our reputation. My, my, sons, <laughs> my, my boys say that they're preacher's kids squares because uh, because my dad's a preacher and I'm a preacher now. <laughs> oh, so, that's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, I did not become a preacher. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, yes, you time. did. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's just all in a, a different it's way. All, yeah, just, you know, I actually used to be a nurse. So I was a nurse before yeah. I started. Right. Lisa, Lisa is a nurse. Mm-hmm. What kind yes. of nurse are you, Lisa? I was a pediatric nurse when I worked at a pediatric hospital. Oh my gosh. Yes. I, I worked at it. Eggleston Children's Hospital for years. And, and where's then, that? Um, Atlanta, Georgia. In Atlanta. Okay. And I then I went at- and got my master's in pediatric health and child nice. health. And then I worked at Shepherd Spinal Center for years. Oh, then- wow. I only, I worked at Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital in St. Louis. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Lovely. Look at us. Um, so, <laughs> and I've been to Bluffton and I've been to Mountain Brook. Have you really? My two homes. So <laughs> this is a total aside. And then I promise to answer that question. That's fine. Oh, I like, I like chasing rabbits. It's all good. 
does everybody have a stress dream? Like when you're stressed out, you, you dream about one thing, like yeah, you're not to take the class and you have to take the final, right? <laughs> so, so Lisa, my stress dream is that I'm back in the hospital as a nurse and I yeah. forgot to take care of a patient oh. all day. Yeah. And I oh, go to I go to evening report and they're like oh. how they, patient in room whatever and I'm like oh, oh, I'm oh. oh no I know that I know that dream I know that fear how about that I know that fear gosh I would double check my assignment so oh. many times making sure I didn't miss somebody. Yes. Uh, anyway. Terrible. Okay. How do I, I, had to, I just have to put this in though, but Marie is a first grade teacher. So yeah. she's got her own level of stress. Too, yeah. so <laughs> oh, and then I misunderstood your question. You're like, where do you go when you feel that stress? I'm like, I go to Disney world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Nightmares you have when you're stressed out. <laughs> yeah. I got you. I followed you after the fact, but yeah. yeah. She doesn't have any nightmares because she's I at Disney world. when they're relatively healthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, all right. As far okay. as what Joy wow. taught me and, yes. and my own journey. Yes. Anyway, so I'm a preacher's kid. So of course, as you know, um, when you grow up in the faith, there's a given faith, the faith you're given, the faith you grew up with. And then there is um, 56 now. So now there's a different kind of faith and there's the faith that's mine. Yeah. And so that journey is a whole different podcast or talk. But um, as far as Joy one of my favorite things, well, what I say all the time for everybody, especially women, but I don't want to just blanket it with women is, you know, one of the things she really shows us, and we talked about this for a minute, but is that we might not all need to pack up our bags and move to London, although it looks like great right now, but <laughs> we might not all need to pack up our kids and grab our kids and move to London, but we definitely need to pack up other people's expectations and Amen. who everybody else tells us we need to be and trust our inner voice, you know, that, that we're the true inner voice, not, not our ego, but mm -hmm. to listen to God's whispers and to trust an inner voice and to pack up what everybody else says, who we should be, where we should go, what we should do, what we were made for. They don't get to decide. They don't get to tell us. And Joy is a great example of that. She just packed up all of that, all everything, but everybody told her she had to be and all everybody told her she had to do. And she just packed that up. And I love that. And the other, I mean, I have a whole list, actually. I have like <laughs> a few lessons from Joy. But the other thing for me personally is that I don't know about you, but bringing, being growing up in the church, you know, going to church four times a week, twice on Sundays, every Wednesday night, in the youth group, in the choir, there wasn't a lot of questioning. There's a lot of learning, but there wasn't a lot of questioning. And questions were often met, and this isn't an, an insult to my parents at all. They're, you know, they're they're wide and intellectual, but on the whole, there wasn't a lot of encouragement of the larger questions. And um, one of my, as I talk about this a lot, but one of my favorite poets is David White, and he's an English-born poet, a little bit Irish, and he has this idea of what's called the bigger question. And the beautiful question, and that there are some, he has a quote that I'm going to mangle, but it, it's something to the effect of that the beautiful question is the question that will, can make or unmake a life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Joy was willing to ask the beautiful questions. Mm -hmm. And that makes me more willing to ask the mm -hmm. beautiful questions, even if it goes against everything, doctrine or theology or whatever it might be, it's still okay to ask the question. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Faith is a mystery. And I think we work so hard to take the mystery out of it yeah. and faith is an unfold. And we work so hard to try to hurry it up, you know? And, and I think that's part of like, sometimes the, the criticism that maybe you get or other people get when they like show the imperfection, right. That we don't want to see that in other people. Cause we don't want to see it in ourselves. We don't want to see it in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, and our shadows are the things that we're the most scared of in other people. Yes. So the questions that, um, that what joy might trigger in somebody or the big question that, you know, makes somebody get angry. Yeah. It's the one they're afraid to ask. And it's actually the place that we need to sit and let God show us. Right. But we're like, Oh, I don't want to deal with that. So I'll just put some hate mail on YouTube or whatever in response to something you did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just be uncomfortable with it. Like mm -hmm. sit in yeah. the discomfort yeah. and mm -hmm. let it sit there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to die yeah. of it. You're not going to die of a big question. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
I think that's an encouraging part of their story also. And even yours, as, as I understood how long it took you to, to research and write, is that beautiful things do not often, they do not happen quickly. They take commitment. They take, I am confident there were a few times that you got to a point and you're like, I don't even know what I'm doing now, you know, or what, and I heard you in one interview talk about kind of a tribe that you had that, you know, would encourage you. And I, you know, I think those kind of things are so, it's important to say this did not happen quickly. This also no. was an unfolding, right? Yeah. And, 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 and I have author pals who can write a book in three months or, mm -hmm. or, and, you know, they, they don't write historical fiction that requires, was, yeah. three years, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, it's just not, and their books are beautiful. Mm -hmm. They're awesome, but I can't, that, it doesn't work that way for me. There yeah. are things have to feed into it. Mm -hmm. And then I have to listen and then I have to despair and then mm -hmm. I have to start over <laughs> and then I have to, yeah. 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 What is there anything yeah. else about joy? Well, ladies, do you have some other follow-up questions or circle was, back? Anything else about joy? Lisa has something. Yeah. I was going to look, I was looking at the comment. Um, somebody said yes. that they are rushing to read joy's work and ordering the novel now. Yay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I thought the same you won't thing. Regret I, that. <laughs> I was Googling a lot of joy stuff. I'm thinking I've got to read all that now, but mm -hmm. I had to read this three times first. So I didn't have mm -hmm. time. I, <laughs> I think you and my mom are the only ones, but that's amazing. <laughs> It's amazing. Thank I, you. I just appreciate the time and effort, you know, yeah, that you yeah. put into this. And I need to go to Oxford and, yep. you know, I need to walk these footsteps because I just, it's just amazing to me. And thank you for that. Gosh, mm -hmm. Lisa, I think if you do that, it will come alive even more. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have a reader who I've become friends with who um, tracked me down and I, I wasn't on tour. Well, none of us are on tour right now, yeah, but right. I wasn't on tour in her city and she came to see me in Atlanta and I met her. Her name's Rachel. And um, she ended up writing a thesis about joy and then going to Oxford and going to all the places in the book. I'm no. going. I, I was supposed to be in London in July next month for a wedding and COVID canceled it, but it's next July. So guess what's going on the list? I was supposed okay. to be there in July too. And it got moved to next July for, and you guys might want to look this up if you're interested. It's called Oxbridge and it's put on by the C.S. Lewis Institute. And it um, was supposed to be this July and it, now it's next July. Oh, so I'll be there. <laughs> so Lisa and Patty will be meeting up in London. And, right. And I just want to let you know, Lisa, in case you missed it, your sister just said, I'm going to go to Lisa with Lisa to Oxford. Right. Lisa's sister's watching and now she's planning a trip with her. So uh, <laughs> Patty, is there anything else about joy that you just really want to share with us? Something that you like always like to tell people or anything that we've missed that you're like, hey, I just want you guys to know this before we sign off. No, no we've I covered think a we lot touched of it. on all the yeah. like okay. high points. Um, okay. The rest you can find in the book. Find for oh. yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, before we sign off, just tell us a little bit about like maybe where we can follow you. I know we can find your books wherever books are sold. I know that in audio and all of that. And also, will you put in a little plug? I just saw today that you have a new book coming out in March. So can you talk to I us just do. a little bit about that also and where we can follow you and all that kind of good stuff? Absolutely. So you can find me at pattycallahan.com, pattycallahanhenry.com. So I'm not, I don't have a split personality, but um, I, my contemporary novels are under Patty Callahan Henry. And then my historical novels are under. Okay. Patty good Callahan. to know. I did not know the se what the that, separation was. That's Got it. Okay. The separation is. So okay. um, my new novel that comes out in March of 2021, which sounds a million years away, but we all know is tomorrow mm -hmm. is, um, it's historical. It's called Surviving Savannah. And it is about the untold and true story of a shipwreck that happened in 1838, mm -hmm. carrying all the elite of Savannah and Charleston on the steamboat headed north for the summer. And it exploded off the coast of North Carolina and sank, obviously. And the survival stories are simply astounding. And I couldn't believe when I learned about this that it had been untold, especially this one particular family we follow. It was a family of 11 that boarded the ship and he was one of the owners and investors of the ship. And the stories of what happened to them, especially to the ones who survived and what they did with their lives. And then we also have a modern day storyline in it of a, because three years ago, that ship was found at the bottom of the ocean, 30 miles off the coast of Wilmington, North Carolina, hundred feet deep. 
and they're bringing up all the artifacts, the gold, the jewelry, the pocket watches, the plates, the everything they traveled with has been sitting under the sea for 183 wow. years and they're bringing it up. And so I have a modern day character that is curating a museum sure. exhibit uh -huh. and learning about the ship. That okay, I can't fantastic. wait. I know, I know, I can't wait either. I know. I'm going to pre-order it. We haven't released the cover yet. The cover probably will come in the next two or three weeks. But um, my favorite place to hang out on social media is Instagram. I'm probably okay. there more than anywhere else. Okay. And then right now, every Wednesday night, I don't know. We said only for yes. a few weeks and it keeps going, yeah. but um, I am part of a group of four other authors mm -hmm. um, and we have a thing called Friends in Fiction and we've been having guests every week and then some weeks it's just the five of us talking but yes we are we've i've just found that in the last little bit and we've watched a few and we're really in, is it friends in fiction or fiction and friends friends in fiction friends in fiction i always get it i always have to be like i can't remember which one it is friends in fiction so yeah i definitely encourage anybody that's watching or listening to check that out because that's just yeah. been really fun to it's just to watch fun. and to learn and, yeah well, we, and to hear from, from people. we did it because all five of us had book tours canceled i know i and we've so, had several authors on that have tried to i mean they are launching and their their tours and their awful. speaking stuff it's all canceled and i just hate it for all of you yes awful yeah. So we just got together and we were just talking on a Zoom like this, not live, but just for fun. And then we're like, let's do it online. And then it's just grown and grown. And now we have guests and it's been such a blast. So I think it's it one of my, I think I just saw that you guys have like over 8,000 people in the group now or whatever, which is Crazy. just wonderful. Just a few so, weeks. Yeah. 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 So many yeah. books to read though. So I know. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so many and Lisa, yeah. ha when she reads everything three times, it just takes right. her a while to get there. <laughs> She does not read everything three times. She only reads um, my book three times. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> it was, right, that's yeah. what I'm going to believe. That's it. <laughs> oh, it has been just a delight to have you tonight. Thank this. you so much. So we thank are so for grateful for your time. And thank you. I feel like, and I'm not, I'm not just saying this. I feel like I'm a better person. I feel like my heart is better for reading this and for knowing joy through your eyes and so mm -hmm. i just really appreciate you sharing her with us it's been a gift so mm -hmm. yes thank you so much all right we're okay. gonna sign out well yeah, hopefully we'll um, meet in real life one day okay yeah. <laughs> we would love that we would love to have you back to talk about another book maybe we can get that done so we Let's would love it that. to have you back all right all right um, so we're gonna say good night everybody good night. peace good night Reading Becoming Mrs. Lewis was a true experience for me and one I am so grateful for. The quote from Joy Davidman that Patty mentioned during the interview is one that I have thought of often since our conversation. If we should ever grow brave, what on earth would become of us? What on earth indeed? Thank you so much for listening today. I hope wherever this finds you, you are walking in confident knowledge that you are a beloved, cherished child of God. Peace.